Hello and welcome to The Elevator Pitch, hosted by yours truly, Sam Borders. And Trace Maloney, the show where we create two movies and pitch them head-to-head against each other. Uh, you know, real quick, right before we hop into it, if you got any friends, share the podcast with them. Leave us a rating and a review. You know, do all that great stuff that makes this podcast get out there a little bit more. That's right. Uh, but let's actually get into the podcast. You know, we, yeah. we, um, what we do, for those of you who haven't listened before, maybe your friend showed mm-hmm. it to you, um, is we take two wheels. One of them is uh, filled with movie genres. The other is filled with actors and actresses. And we spin those wheels twice. Mm-hmm. Twice. Each. No more than that. Two. And occasionally more than no that. No more? No less. No less. Um, so we use those to get a movie. Three is okay. ri- outright. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we do that <laughs> to get a movie. And then with that movie, we make a pitch around it. And at the end, after we make that process all over again, we pitch those two movies head to head. So, yeah. Let's just hop yeah. right into it. That's, that's Let's the, do it. That's how, we, that's how we introduce the show. Spin it. Okay. Our first genre is... Oh my God. I'm so excited. I'm so f- fucking excited. A biopic. Wait. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a biopic. All right. Okay. The second genre. So this will kind of give us the, the person or people we have to do. Is an uh-huh. animated biopic. Uh, I think we can work with that. Okay. Okay. So, well, let's get to our stars first. Yeah, let's get some stars. All right. Our first star for this animated biopic is... Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Gotta love him. Okay. Tommy Lee Jones and. Mm hmm. And who? <laughs> Nicholas Cage. <laughs> oh, God. The fucking powerhouse duo of the century. Yeah. Okay. So, you know what? So I'll say right off the bat, I'm glad that we got animated as well, because that gives us a freedom. Yeah, you know what's really weird is yep. making a biopic, but it's animated. Yeah. Has anybody ever done that before? No, we're breaking new ground. And we you are trailblazers. Be excited about that. Well, it, what I was thinking... Mm-hmm. Uh, another angle we could approach this from. This doesn't have to be it. It's just a suggestion. Yeah. What if it's about something to do with animation? Like. Okay. I don't think it'll be Walt Disney, but like. No, I don't think Disney. either of those work with. I don't know. Nick Cage is Walt Disney. I mean, it's not a bad idea. Who's that one guy? What's his name? The one guy. You know. The yeah. One guy. Being what real descript- one guy? I'm a very descriptive person, if you haven't caught on yet. Um, Don Bluth. I was looking at him as you were saying that. Because I was yeah. trying to see... I, I imagine what you're saying is, is what if we make a... What if biopic about Don Bluth? It, well, what if you, I see you're saying make a kind of a mixture, right? Yeah. So that it, like it's it's it's... I don't know. We could just do like some just, other person, and it's like an it's animated, animated for some reason. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Because it's it's fun on the wheel. <laughs> yeah, and I think, like we said, we're trailblazing like that. You know, if we do Don Bluth, Nick Nick Cage is going to be Don Bluth. He kind of like he looks more like him than Tommy Lee Jones looks like him. So yeah. they look similar enough. In like a biopic way, Mm -hmm. you know. Okay, well, let's put that on the back burner. That idea. 
who could we do then? Anyone. I get that we could do anyone. Yeah. Okay. I see. I kind of see what you're going for. What? Who is like interesting enough to be done? And mm-hmm. who hasn't already? Either A hasn't already had one or hasn't had a good one. Maybe. Yeah. That's a good question. Um, I don't think. See now, now your idea with Don Bluth is kind of intriguing to me because I don't think anyone, not many people, really know about Don Bluth. You know, I don't think he's is yeah. in the public eye as like Walt Disney, perhaps. Yeah, so maybe maybe that is an option. It's looking um, like a good option. What um, about Doctor Seuss? That's also kind of could work with animated. Hmm. Is there, a, is there a Dr. Seuss? He is one of those people that has, like, this awesome legacy, but was a really shitty person. Um, I mean, that'd be interesting to explore then, yeah? Yeah, so he kind of... Because I don't really know... I, I know kind of about Dr. Seuss. I don't remember the whole thing that I... Was, saw once but i i know I, I don't know enough about don bluth to know if that's going to be an interesting biopic um, well he worked for disney and then he left and he made his own company and made some stuff and then uh they didn't then, make then, anything else once it beefed it went south uh yeah they did like land before time mm-hmm. secret of nim anastasia uh yeah, uh, but I don't do know think? if his. What do you I don't think? Know if, what are you? Th- what are you thinking? My thing with Don Bluth is I'm not sure if his actual life is interesting enough. Like, of course, he has okay. great achievements, more than I think I'll ever have. So that's nice, but it's not really a biopic if there's no drama, you know. Uh, yeah. You know what okay, I'm saying? Because well if, if it do was Mr. just like he was successful and then he died, then that kind of sucks. You know? Yeah. We could do... I, can, I mean, we could just do Dr. Seuss if you want to do that. We could. Well, let's keep let's, let's keep spitballing just a little bit. Okay. Because, because when it comes to a biopic, it, it's, there's not really much to do with the plot. It's just make their life. Yeah, it's just kind of go read their Wikipedia page. Plus and minus <laughs> and occasional then things. Like embellish some things, ignore some things. Yeah. Um, um, so if we do kind of a mixture of real life animation type thing, then it, I think Dr. Seuss might be the way to go. Okay. I, I know that he's not necessarily animation, but we can get that animation aspect. Mm-hmm. Plus his life has enough drama to to make a good you know, biopic feel. Um, but who else could we do? What if we did... I'm trying to think of, like, someone who... Would there be a list on Google? Tommy Lee Jones. He hasn't had one. What if we did a I mean, Keanu... I mean, he's perfect actor to play. What if we did a Keanu Reeves biopic? Um, everyone loves Keanu Reeves. Hold on. Yeah. Well, what you what you're about to tell me yeah. is that we make a Keanu Reeves biopic. Yeah. And we cast Nicolas Cage as Keanu Reeves. <laughs> you know it. Instead of getting Keanu, Keanu himself. Reeves. Yeah. Is there a problem? I mean, I guess so. No, I guess there's not a problem. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. <laughs> I, I, here's the here's the thing. Tommy Lee Jones was a joke. Um, usually, do you do biopics about people who are, like, alive? Does that happen usually? Not like, usually. You had to be, like, dead. I don't know if that's, like, a necessary precursor, but typically they're already dead. Like, I don't think they were making the Steve Job, the seven Steve Job movies they made until after he died. <laughs> so. <laughs> um... What if we did it on the... Also, um, yep. 
Well, I was going to say biopics. It's like, if you go too far back, it almost doesn't feel like a biopic. No, it's just it like It feels like history. just like a history movie. Yeah. Like, Lincoln, I guess, was technically a biopic, but like... Was it? <laughs> <laughs> I want... In a true biopic, I want... Um... I want to have that that part during the credits where you show pictures of the real person. Yeah. Um, because if <laughs> if you don't if you don't do that, then it's not it's not worth it. I'm just yeah. Oh God, this is hard. This is like when we struggle to come up with a title for like a movie. I mean, we could just pick one and go with it. What I'm gonna look up real quick, like famous people who haven't had biopics. Okay. I'll see if that's a, a something that that even comes up on Google. No, okay. People who should have biopics made about them or biopics. David Bowie. That's a good option. Albert Einstein. Another good one. Bob Marley. We don't have the right cast for it. Bob Ross. That's a better Bob for this cast. Because Tommy Lee Jones kind of has a sultry voice like Bob Ross did. I guess so. And everyone's on the Bob Ross train now, too. Albert Einstein would also be interesting. I don't know if Tommy Lee Jones looks like Albert Einstein, though. Well, that, well, I definitely don't think well, Nick Cage thing, does. If we're not doing, I get that they who, don't have to look exactly like him. Well, well, if we're not doing something that has to do with drawing or animation, we don't have to worry about that at all. Because I guess that's animated. true. Then they're just, they're I just, just voice actors. I feel like why the fuck is it animated? <laughs> Sam, we're not actually making this movie. We have our criteria. We have to do it. <laughs> I know, but then like, what's the point of having it be animated? Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What if it were Bob Ross, but instead of, like, really animated in a traditional sense, it was, like, made to look like a Bob Ross painting? Like, it was okay. painted, That'd it was, like, animate. Like, did you ever see... It's, like, oil painted. Yeah, did you ever see that... that like that, like that, uh... Van Gogh thing. Yeah. That's where they where of. every fucking frame was a painting. Like they literally painted the okay, entire yeah. movie. What if we do that from Bob, Bob Ross? Ross it is. Which I kind of feel like is an insult um, to Vincent Van Gogh. What do you mean? Well, like Bob Ross is great and all, and I love Bob Ross, but Van Gogh was like he's like Van Gogh. Bob Ross is an inspiration to a generation. That's true. In his own right. I love Bob Ross. I have a Bob Ross t-shirt. Maybe two of them. I don't remember. Um, we'll do Bob Ross then. So yeah, we'll do Bob Ross. Um, here's the thing. We don't really have anything else to do for this movie. We could well, go through his life I mean, on Wikipedia and like decide what we, we want to keep or take. We could talk about his life. We could do that because we... Yeah, let's I guess do that. Because we, we have to film. Let's see. <laughs> we have to. We have. We can't stop at fifteen minutes and say, "Well, on to the next one." Yeah. So we have to. We have to do that. So okay. Early life. Ross, also known as Bob Ross, mm-hmm. uh, was born in Dayton Beach, Florida, to Jack and Ollie Ross, a carpenter and a waitress, respectively, and raised in Orlando. As an okay. adolescent, Ross cared for injured animals, including armadillos, snakes, alligators, and squirrels. Adorable. One of which was later f- featured in several episodes of his television show. He had a half-brother, Jim, who he mentioned in passing on his show. Bob Ross dropped out of high school in the ninth grade. While working as a carpenter with his father, he lost part of his index finger, which did not affect his ability to later hold a pallet while painting. So already, we've got the drama. We've got this heartstring tugging kind of. He loved animals. He dropped yeah. out of high school. Um, so we've got this. We've got some aspects that we can really. The, work the beginning with here. is. It's already got a good feeling for a beginning. 
for the start. It's, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's it's got a good um, start. So it's gonna really let this get emotional, you know? Cause, yeah. I mean, what's a biopic if not emotional? Exactly. Uh, so the next big thing in Bob Ross's life was his military career. Yes. Um, in 1961, 18-year-old Bob Ross enlisted in the U- U.S. Air Force and was put into services at a, as a medical records technician. He rose to the rank of Master Sergeant and served as the first sergeant of the Clinical Elysian Air Force Base in Alaska, where he first saw the snow and mountains that later appeared as recurring themes in his painting. So that's our, I can already okay. feel that is a moment. He's, he's got to be like, oh, this is so beautiful type of thing. He weeps Something a single like tear. I don't know. Yeah, a single um, manly tear. Yeah. <laughs> and a bald de- eagle flies. <laughs> <laughs> he developed his quick painting technique. And the national anthem starts playing. <laughs> uh, it's already so patriotic. He developed his quick painting technique during brief delay daily work breaks. Having held military positions that required him to act tough and mean... The guy who makes you scrub the latrine, the guy who makes you make your bed, the guy who screams at you for being late to work, Ross decided he wouldn't raise his voice when he left the military. Another great moment. It's, it's great stuff. Where, where this you, is good stuff. Where this is good material. This is great material. So there's like this scene, this beautifully painted scene where he's... Um, oh yeah, I forgot that it's all painted. <laughs> yeah, where he's... Um, it's like this montage of him yelling at people. And then at the end of the montage, he just like shuts his office door behind him and he lets out another tear <laughs> and he vows <laughs> and to another himself. Bald eagle. Yeah. And he <laughs> vows to himself then and there, I will never yell again. Not to, not to raise his voice anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, so then the next tab is a uh, career as a painter. Uh, During his 20-year Air Force career, Ross developed an interest in painting after attending an art class at the Anchorage USO Club. He found himself frequently at odds with many of his painting instructors who were more interested in abstract painting. Bob Ross, Bob Ross was a, he wanted that shit to look good and real. I mean, there's, there's more scenes. There's more scenes for us. Teachers being like, come on, get, get silly with it. He has a painting session with Jackson Pollock. And he's like, this is shit. <laughs> that is the type of shit that a biopic would have. Yeah. Start um, throwing in random uh, cameos from we have that to em- they didn't actually meet. Yeah, we have to embellish some things. So maybe he... I mean, he- so far it's like, why should we even bother? It's got a good I don't know if so we far. had this if we had this great <laughs> Jackson Pollock moment where that was his teacher and then he was like this sucks <laughs> that would be great. Um, <laughs> Bob Ross said, "They'd tell you what makes a tree, but they wouldn't tell you how to paint a tree." That's a great quote. You're always telling me what makes a tree, but you never <laughs> tell me how to paint a tree. I have a Maybe quick that's question. the yeah. Is um, so who's playing what so far? Do we want I it like to be it. a dual cast situation? Like, whoa, like, are you saying? Like, I guess we would have to have like we would need like four stages of his life. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um. Well, he didn't get so old. He died that? in his fifties. So I guess that's true. So we really only need three. Uh, yeah. We'll figure it out. Keep yeah, we'll, f- we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, Ross was working as a part-time bartender when he discovered a TV show called The Magic of Oil Painting, hosted by a German painter, Bill Alexander. Alexander used a 16th century painting style called Alla Prima, Italian for first attempt, widely known as wet on wet, that allowed him to create a painting within 30 minutes. Ross studied and mastered the technique, be- began painting, and then successfully selling Alaskan landscapes that, would, that he would paint on novelty gold mining pans. Neat. 
Eventually, Ross became... Hmm. Ross's income from sales surpassed his military salary. He retired from the Air Force in 81 as a master sergeant. He returned to Florida, studied painting with Alexander, joined his Alexander Magic Art Supplies Company, and became a traveling salesman and tutor. Annette Kowalski, who had attended one of his sessions in Clearwater, Florida, convinced Ross he could succeed on his own. She, along with Ross and his wife, pulled their savings to create his company, which struggled at first. So here's another. This is like probably the bulk of the movie. Struggle, yeah. Starving yeah. artist. Uh, Ross yeah. was noted for his permed hair, which he ultimately disliked, but kept after he had uh, integrated it into the company logo. <laughs> his brand. He hated his afro. Um, the origins of the TV show The Joy of Painting are unclear. It was filmed at the studio of the PBS station. Uh, WIPB in M- M- Muncie, Indiana. The show ran from January 11, 1983 to May 7, 1970, 17th to ni- 1994, but reruns still continue to appear in many broadcast areas and countries, including the non commercial digital subchannel n- network Create. In the UK, the BBC uh, reran episodes during the COVID pandemic of 2020 while most viewers were in lockdown at home. That's nice. It's nice of them. Yeah. Okay, who's this? Is this the man? This is Bill Alexander that I've just sent you. Now, what I'm getting the vibe of here, and tell me if I'm wrong, we've got Tommy Lee Jones on the right there as Bill Alexander. And we've got, I guess, I don't know if I would necessarily cast Nicolas Cage as Bob Ross usually. I feel but like it would be really funny to hear uh, the, Nick the Cage. The wheel commands it. <laughs> well, I think it would be really funny to have Nick Cage try a German accent. Uh, okay, so you're thinking the other way. I'm thinking the opposite. I think Tommy Lee Jones has a pretty sultry voice, which is which okay, is we'll other, than the perm, other than the perm. Other than the perm. Go your idea. Don't fucking do this to me right now. What? <laughs> oh, okay. We'll go with your idea. Don't. No, we'll go with that. It's fine. I'm pit. Oh my god. No, that's I'm fine. just giving uh, another okay. option. No, that's that's fine. Um, Technically, we got Tommy Lee Jones first, and it's a Bob Ross biopic. Yeah. Okay. I hate you. Yeah, I, see your, I see your shitting and grin on your face. You're trying to make me feel bad, <laughs> and I hate you. I'm not doing anything. I'm just trying to get this movie to be the best it can possibly be. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> um, I feel like it kind of wrote itself, honestly. Yeah, that's the thing. But again, There's we still have other... To embellish. Yeah, we have some other time. We still have some more time. I could get into his personal life, which is a short thing. Okay. Yeah, we can we can look at that. Sure. Uh, Ross had one son, Robert Stevens, Steve Ross, with his first wife, Vivian Ridge. Steve, also a talented painter, occasionally appeared on The Joy of Painting. If you've ever seen that meme where the guy's painting and he's got like a mullet and a mustache and he goes, I pulled a sneaky one on you, that's Bob Ross's son. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Steve appeared on, on camera uh, in the last episode of season one in which he read a series of general how-to questions sent in by viewers during the season. And Bob answered them one at a time, technique by technique, until he had completed an entire painting. Ross and Ridge's marriage ended in divorce, another... Great story point. So uh, in 1977, Ross and his second wife Jane had no children together. In 1992, Jane died of cancer. In 1995, two months before so his sad. death, Ross married for a third time to Linda Brown. Ross was very secretive about his life and had a great liking for privacy. Some only knew uh, some of only a few interviews with close knit circle of friends and families can be found in the 2011 PBS document documentary Bob Ross the Happy Painter. Bob Ross Inc. is protective of his IP and his privacy to this day. The, we're I respect have, that. And we will too. Yes. 
I, I mean, well, I guess whatever's common knowledge is okay to... Yes. Um, whatever we currently know. And then in 1995, he, uh, he passed away due to complications of lymphoma. So that's... Um, so sad. A true tragedy. It really is. He was a... He seems like a great dude. I mean, I never knew him, but... Yeah. Um, I've definitely well, watched we got, the show. Well, we got who we're doing. We've read his entire Wikipedia page. Most of it. Um, I, there was a lot. It. There was there was a lot more that I could have read, but I, I was skipping no, I through get it. it. Um, we hit the big points of his Wikipedia page. Yeah. Just imagine those being like converted into movie form. You know, cinematic shots. Him seeing the show and being like, "Oh, that's great!" And then like he joins up with him and all that. It's just gonna feel. It's one of those heartfelt movies, you know. It's one of those feel-good movies that'll have some moments of, like, s- the sadness. It's got a little bit of tearjerker, yeah. But overall, it'll just be really happy, because I think that's what Bob Ross stood for, was happiness. That's what Bob Ross would want. That's what Bob Ross wanted. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. What Should it be... I think. I think it should be called The Happy Painter. It was... That was there at the... TV documentary, Bob Ross, The Happy Painter. Are you allowed to do that? Well, we're not saying Bob Ross, The Happy Painter. I don't know. I don't know if that's allowed. <laughs> we're not stealing the whole name. We're stealing part of the name. Um, Wet on Wet. <laughs> that sounds like a porno. <laughs> um... Hmm. Ba- what if it's just like Ross? I mean, that's that sounds right. It feels like um, a biopic. And then, wow. okay, mm-hmm. the the logo for it, like on the thing, it yeah. looks like his signature on his paintings. And it's just Ross. What Beautiful. do you think of that? Beautiful. I agree. Okay, it's just Ross. That's what it's like, called. Maybe like a subtitle, like I don't know. It says the I happy painter. <laughs> Ross, the happy painter. What if it's just Bob Ross? I feel like Bob Ross is more iconic. Bob Ross, yeah. Let's, Let's just do uh, fucking Bob what Ross. Is, what? Are, okay, we'll just do Bob Ross. That's uh, uh yeah, we'll do that. That's fine. Because I feel like I feel like Ross, the happy painter. Or Ross subtitle is isn't it doesn't feel right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll go with your. your idea. Oh my God! <laughs> I'm gonna scream. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't think there's much else to say. I think we can I don't move really on to the next one. Yeah. Let's go ahead and just move on. There's no reason That'll to allow us to, uh, to to really soak in the next one. We'll be able yeah. to take our time. I will say, I do kind of feel bad. That's the first Nicolas Cage movie we got, and that's all we had to offer him. What, to play a German man who loves to paint? Well, yeah, it just couldn't have gotten I as crazy as some of our other movies. You yeah, know? I guess that's true. Like him in like, something like Born Dumb. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, anyway, let's get this next Maybe movie. Maybe we'll get him again. Who knows? Maybe. Our first genre of this movie is a sequel. A sequel. Okay. A sequel to something. We don't know yet, but yeah. let's see what our other genre is. And everybody loves a good sequel. Our other genre is Western. Western sequels. Well, we did that with. Wait, what was Tulip? What was Tulip That's Grit? The exact same. Um, it that was. Was that a sequel western? A western sequel, yeah. Okay. Or was it a yeah? Because it was two. It was two lip. Yeah. Grit. Uh. Um. Three lip grit. <laughs> Let's get our <laughs> no. Let's get our stars. Okay. 
Let's get our stars first. Wait, wait. Mm hmm. Above snakes. Yes. That's above a movie snakes. Limit. We we said that if we ever got sequel to a western, that we were gonna come back to it. It was gonna be a trilogy. Okay. Do you remember I, that, or am I fucking I crazy? Th- think I remember that. We were gonna make a trilogy, and we had to get these genres again. Okay, so we already know. Cause, cause tulip, cause tulip grit. And Above Snakes are the only movies that we've made Western themed. And you said fucking Tulip Grit, and now I'm thinking of Above Snakes. And we have to make Above Snakes 2 below (laughs) Snakes. The end Snakes. Okay, sure, yeah. So, do we. Who the fuck was in that movie? Natalie Portman? Well, Natalie Portman. No, we have to get. Jamie Lee Curtis was in it, but she died, right? Beefed it for those who didn't watch the other episode. Um. So so, do we want to spend one more time, or do we want to get two more stars? Let's get for two thing? other people to get into this, this snake action. Also, Josh Brolin was the bad yes, guy, right? Josh Brolin. And did he die, or is he coming back? No, he did not die. She was on a a, a vengeance trip, if I remember correctly. Okay. Fucking hell, I forgot about this movie. Okay, well, it's going to be alright. This is how sequels are made. They go... No, This I is know. how they make sequels in Hollywood. They go, ah, shit, what happened in that movie? Somebody... No, they go, what What dormant IP do we have laying around? Above what snakes? Happened in okay, that let's one? use that one. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's do it. Great. Let's get supporting cast. Perfect. This is fucking perfect. I love this. Okay, our first supporting cast member is... good Mila Kunis <laughs> always <laughs> always She's in Mila every Kunis. movie we ever made <laughs> it feels this is like, like the fucking does. third movie right <laughs> fourth? I think it's so. one of those fucking oh well you know what um, welcome Mila Kunis again mm. welcome back welcome to the franchise um here's here's our next star or yep. fucking supporting character Robert Downey Jr. (laughs) Now, if I remember correctly, it was also a it was a superhero western. Was the thing? Yes, that was the thing. So we're making a sequel to our own movie. Yes, this is new ground. This is new ground. That's sick. We are trailblazing this episode. We really are. Animated biopics, sequels to our own films. So, yep. okay. I know that... So, okay. So, so if we remember correctly. If I can remember correctly. It's should I just fucking thought. read it the... A, should I read the pitch? I guess so. I mean, that would be helpful. Let's fucking yeah. do it. Yeah. Let's read the previous pitch. Okay. Let me fucking find it. It does seem I'm that glad we... I, I'm glad I keep these. It seems the... Um... Hands of Fate realized that we needed a lot of time for the second movie. <laughs> yeah, it did. Right. Uh, Read it. People always talked about the snake, the mysterious wanderer with the quickest hand in the West. But Maggie, Natalie Portman, always thought it was a legend. That was until Sarah, Jamie Lee Curtis, came to town. After a scuffle leads to a duel, Sarah gets a price on her head. Does the bell finally toll for the snake? Only God knows. It did. It turns out it did. It did. She she did fucking beef it right at the end. So <laughs> she was quick. She was quick. That was the thing. Yeah. That was he her superpower. Was like like super telepathic tough? or something. No, he what? was. Well, I think he was too. He was kind of a broken character. <laughs> but that makes him more. Uh, badass. Yeah, but he was telepathic, so he could see what was happening. I don't want to retread too many, too much ground recapping this, and I want to get into making this movie. Well, I just want to. I know that we have to recontextualize Maggie things so that was, people know. 
telekinetic? She, she was telekinetic, yes. Okay, okay. That's the big things that we needed to get down. She's telekinetic, yeah. he's telepathic and strong, and she Never wants to kill him. Never confusing. She wants to kill him. Yeah. That's it's her a revenge. drive. It's a revenge story. But he can't die this one, because we have a third one to make eventually. That's right. There's a trilogy. Or he dies and there's somebody else that takes up the bad guy role. Perhaps either Mila Kunis or Robert Downey Jr. We'll see. We'll see. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll start playing around in the space. Okay. So if I remember correctly, she had just left to go hunt him down. Josh Brolin. I think so. So, so what can happen now? I'm trying to fucking think because we're we've been given this golden egg. Yeah. And we can either crack it and make the most delicious omelet ever or just really drop this egg right on the ground and, and make it nasty. Make a nasty mud omelet. This is this is a beautiful analogy. I've always I've yeah. always told everyone I meet Trace has such a way with words. Did you hear his egg thing that he does sometimes? <laughs> egg, the, the, you know <laughs> about the, his you dirty know egg famous, omelet. <laughs> you know that famous analogy of the cave. This <laughs> rivals that. <laughs> Trace the is analogy of the play. egg <laughs> and the nasty um, omelet. <laughs> um. Maybe. So yeah, we've been given this beautiful egg. What do we do with it? So, sequels usually raise the stakes, right? Yes. So, what if it's revealed that he is part of some group of bounty hunters? Super. So she has to assemble a team. So she has to assemble a team and do battle. What if Robert Downey? What if Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man? (laughs) Is is playing Tony Stark's great great grandfather. <laughs> He's a cowboy <laughs> Iron Man, steampunk superhero. Steampunk Iron Man is very nice. I'll be honest. That's pretty oh, that fucking funny. That is laid right in front of us, isn't it? It's the big golden uh, egg, Sam. That I don't want to drop it on the ground and make a nasty omelet. Don't Nobody make a nasty that. mud omelet. So it's steampunk. <laughs> so we're dealing with steampunk Iron Man, tele telekinetic Natalie telekinetic. Portman. Yes. And um, what cool Mila power Kunis could is there Mila, too. And Mila Kunis is just <laughs> there now. What cool fucking power could she have? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Are you looking up powers? Is that what you're doing? Wait, my, wait. No, wait. My fucking headphones came unplugged. What the fuck did you say? <laughs> um, I'll be honest. I don't know what I was saying. Okay. Well, I'll just ignore think... it. What was what? Did, what does Mila Kunis do? Yeah, that's what I was asking. I think. Okay. Mila Kunis, see, I was thinking maybe it would be cool if she could turn invisible. Okay, that was a power we were thinking about the last time, too, I think. Yeah, I think we were given that. So let's we just, let's just repurpose Natalie it. Natalie Portman. Repu- repurpose They do that all invisible. the time. They repurpose it and make it a new character. Fuck yes. That's right. Okay. Adapt, we've got our, overcome. We've got our team. Yes, exactly. We've got our team. Bear Grylls is steam- in this movie now. <laughs> just a cameo. Yeah. I don't want him to be a big part, but he can come in as a cameo. <laughs> he can be there. Okay, so that's three. Do you think that's enough for a superhero team? I feel like it's got to be four. Maybe even get into five. So do we spin the wheel two more times? <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of thinking it. Maybe this will be really wheel heavy. Because, I mean, if we're trying to get, like, an Avengers-style system set up, um, it's going to take, like, a lot of actors and actresses. That's true. Okay. Let's spin the wheel two more times, because fuck it, this And we're going to need great. to get that, that villain crew, too. 
I think I think maybe having like one big villain is good for now. It, eventually, if we get this movie again for the third final third and final movie, then we add uh, kind of um, what are they called? Five in, on in one feels a little unfair. Well, he does have. Well, it's going to be five on two, is what I'm trying to say. And he does. He is overpowered, and he does have a gang of bounty hunters that are kind of underlings for him. It's kind of like how okay. Loki had the the army in New York. Yeah. Okay. So it's really five on like twenty. Okay. Um, but I was thinking that there is like a head honcho above Josh Brolin that we will also roll for, yeah. spin for. Um, so that's like, but yeah. that raises the stakes even more. Cause it's like, oh, this bad guy that we thought was the main bad guy? You know what? There's somebody tougher. It's like Josh Brolin is Loki and someone else is Thanos. To keep the Avengers <laughs> train rolling. Um, um, maybe they should both be dro- Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin and Josh Brolin are both characters. Uh, yeah. Well, let's let's get no. our other two actors for our main team. Yeah. Okay. So our first, our fourth actor. Yeah. Is. <laughs> your favorite, Seth Rogen. Oh, he's here too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Your favorite like, guy. <laughs> My favorite guy. He's been in a lot of our movies now. Yeah, this is his third. This is. Um, I mean, this really feels like our kind the of culmination our of our the culmination if of we our get Rob Schneider. <laughs> we're set. But do we want him to be a hero or a villain? <laughs> he has to be a hero, I think. Okay, well, we'll see, we'll see. Okay. Because he's a villain last time we did a movie with him. Was he? Yeah. He oh, was yeah, in, didn't uh, we just self-insert him? We put him in there. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Who so is it? let's spend our fifth, our fifth person is... Yes. Angelina Jolie. Okay, it's kind of a girl power team, you know? Yeah, I mean the last movie was like that, so this one should be like that. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, we got to get our big bad. So we've got our team. Well, okay, let's think of our super, our two other superhero superpowers, real quick. Um, I'm seeing Seth Rogen as comedic relief to a certain extent. Yeah, he not kind too, of not too wacky. But he's gonna no, cut not that super tension. wacky. But he'll definitely cut that cut that tension with a sick weed joke or something. I don't really want. Well, <laughs> if you think so. <laughs> uh, no, I was just um, I was just joking. Um, but d- should he have a power, or should he be like kind of a Hawkeye, where he's just good at something? Um, I think that would be interesting. That way, they're not all super human people but he's kind of like um i know we already have iron man but you know how iron man's like really into gadgets that's kind of his thing is he's kind of a tinkerer he makes these snake oil (laughs) potions type deal he has magic potions (laughs) yeah what if that's his thing (laughs) okay sure why not okay and then angelina jolie i feel like it'd be really cool if she was like um just kind of like a Wonder Woman type, like she could fly, maybe, and was like just super I badass. Can Wonder Woman fly? I have no idea. I don't think she can. Okay, maybe this Wonder Woman can. Why did she? Why did she ever have an invisible jet if she could fly? Um, uh, for uh, just to be cool. Because <laughs> it's rad. Because <laughs> it's fucking rad to have something that's invisible. I mean that's fine, sure. I have I have an invisible jet. Do you know that? I've never seen it. <laughs> you walked right into my trap. Boom, boom, shot. But um, 
But yeah, okay. what if she's just like super right. badass? Like she's just a cool ass fucking That's character. Great. Um, let's get our big bad. Our, <coughs> our big bad. Sorry, I'm choking on nothing. <laughs> what did you do? I just had to fucking choke real quick. Okay, sorry, big bad. Sorry, big bad I'm guy. done choking on nothing. Is yeah. It can't be Mila Kunis. We she's already in this movie. <laughs> she's already in the movie. <laughs> okay, it's gonna be. <laughs> this is maybe really good, Jim Carrey. <laughs> He's done some what good. Is this movie? He, he's done some good things. What if we get him okay. to act like the Riddler, like he already did? It's going to be Fire Marshal Bill. Oh my god, that would be fucking hilarious. Um. Well. Okay. I think so. Okay. He's. Yeah, he's above Josh Brolin, but I think that. As where Josh Brolin is this brooding kind of badass cowboy type, this guy, whoever Jim Carrey's playing, is just fucking insane. And we get okay. him to be like a kind of Joker esque, where he's like a little sadistic, kind of like it's not just business. He likes to kill people, and that's really dark and scary. Yeah, and it makes me sad. It makes me sad that Jim Carrey likes to do this. Why does he like to do this? It makes me sad that Jim Carrey kills people. Um, um, but yeah. You could also just play the character that he played in the Sonic movie. The sadistic man who likes to kill people? I mean, they, he never said talked about killing people, but he did seem pretty insane. He did straight up want to kill a hedgehog. He did. Um, let's ignore that, though. Yeah. What's he got going for him? He... Uh, see, I, th- I feel like that maybe his kind of thing is he's... So her retaliation is going to make Jim... So Natalie Portman's going to retaliate for the death of Jamie Lee Curtis, right? Yes. Sarah dies, Maggie goes and and seeks revenge. Goes after him. Um, I think... Okay. Yeah. Let's just dig into the plot and we'll figure out his power along the way. Yeah. So what I'm feeling for the first bit. Mm-hmm. She goes after him, finds him, finds out she's in it over her head, realizes she has to get help. Okay. What do you think of that? I like that. Let me give you an idea and we'll and we'll pit and we'll kind of see which one feels okay. a little better. I do like that idea. So don't do the shit that you did on me earlier. <laughs> um, no promises. I, uh, I was thinking this was my idea. Um, mm-hmm. So she retaliates. This pisses off Jim Carrey, and he retaliates against her in some horrible way. And she realizes that this is bigger than her now, and that's why she needs people. So she doesn't. She doesn't just see this man and then get in over her head. But he hits back at her harder in some way, and then she's like, "Now well, I, I was have meaning nothing Josh to lose. Brolin. Oh, I whatever see what his you're character saying. is. Okay. So she catches up to him. She's like, "Crap! This is a reason that this guy was bad news. <laughs> I really shouldn't have. Yeah, run I shouldn't have done this. this. Yeah, I shouldn't have done this alone. I wasn't alone last time, and I and I almost died. Um." I see what you're saying. Okay. Um, yeah, I like your idea then. My dogs are barking for some reason. Um, that works. So, And then she goes around and she recruits the groups. Kind of like a heist movie she works gets, where she's like, we got to get the gang together. But it's not a like getting them back together thing. Yeah. It's like Deadpool she goes 2. And There's an interview Iron process. Man. Yeah. Yeah. I forgot about steampunk Iron Man. You did forget about him. Okay, yes. So she is going around. Maybe she meets Seth Rogen first. Okay. 
and he's kind of like this. Maybe maybe she's maybe she's hurt. She's going to look for medical attention. He's there. She but, sees a or a snake oil salesman sees him sees her, uh, and saves her he's like, wife. Let me help you. Yeah. The, so yeah, she goes to attack uh, Josh Brolin, whatever the fuck his name was. I don't think we gave him a name actually. Like, I don't purpose. think he had a name, and I think that's so that he was mysterious. Yeah. Okay. So she goes and attacks the man with no name, and ends up wounded is trying to ride back to town to a town on horse falls off because of whatever blood loss shock whatever and then like as she's like that you know that hazy vision thing where it's like uh, yeah and her eyes are closing there's a you see a a a wagon pull up and it says like and a man with a a big Tall top hat. Big tall top hat, and it says, like, um, Seth Rogen. <laughs> Funny Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen on the side of it. No, it says, like, uh, CL Tromulus. No, that fucking sucks. Um, what are you talking about right I'm now? Trying are you to trying to come name. up with his name right now? Yeah. You know how, like, it sounds like a. Like Trelawney yeah. sounds like a good snake oil salesman name, you know? Uh, sure. I don't think I've ever heard anyone name that, but yeah. Well, it's an old Western name. It's also a superhero movie, so who cares? That's his name. C.L. Trelawney. Um, yes. Is on the side of his card. They just call him Trelawney. Um, he saves her, like you said. Um, yeah. And she's like, how did you do that? I thought I was a goner for sure. Because it's like the 1850s. and if you, Or not the 1850s, but it's like the 1800s. And if you got a splinter, you would die. Um, uh-huh. So she's like, how did you say so his So his snake oils actually work, is what you're getting at. Yes. Yes. In this fictional world, the snake oils work. The um, little tinctures he brews are actually good and useful. Yes. Maybe he's like the only one who makes good ones, like real ones. And, and he, and yeah, he can't and don't he, kill you faster. He can't get luck selling them because people don't buy it, like they don't believe him. <laughs> it, oh no, it fixes their problem so they don't come back to him. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> okay. So um who should she meet next? Steampunk Iron Man. We got to get Steampunk Iron Man in there as soon as yeah, possible. Just get him in there. He's um, just there, and he's like, "I'm here to help." Well, maybe they're, maybe they're, um, in near town, and they're uh, like a, a a gang, a group of bandidos, or just like a gang of like fucking highwaymen come up and try to rob. Trelawney's cart while she's there. She's still injured, but she's there. And there's too mm-hmm. many of these of these highwaymen. And they're like, and he's like, she's like, don't worry, I, I can deal with this. Um, and he's like, no, there's too many of them. And then, and you're like, way still hurt. And yeah, I definitely can't deal with it. He says, because I'm just a guy. And then it's and then it's a, a scene for scene recreation of the first uh, Iron that Iron Man scene, the first time he takes the suit out for the spin. Are you talking about the one where he like fucking blows up the tank? Yeah, except it's a cart. <laughs> I was thinking maybe because it's a steampunk suit, like it doesn't fly or really shoot no. big lasers or <laughs> anything runs like up, that. Clunk, clunk, clunk. It's kind of <laughs> like, like you know how the old Iron Man used to look. <laughs> it's almost I exactly look a little like bit better that. than that. Well, it's it's definitely going to, but it's it's got to be similar to that because it's the 1800s, you know. Yeah. It, it'll it's look steampunk, better, man. It's yeah, got pipes it, and tubes and stuff. It'll look better, but it can't look like incredible, you know. We can still make it look cool, I mean, but it it's not going to be like the best fucking thing ever. Um. 
So yeah, I was thinking like he, he you just hear like you said clunk 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 and in the <laughs> highwayman stop and then you just see like one of his feet hit the ground and then he's there and he's like basically bulletproof is his thing. Like nothing yeah. can really pierce his armor. Um and maybe the steam, because it's steampunk, it's it's a steam powered thing. Maybe he he's, uses he sprays boiling water on well, I was thinking, what if instead of like the fucking of repulsor rays, he has like he shoots hot <laughs> steam at them. It's boiling hot water onto their face, and they it's scream pretty terrifying. in agony. I don't know. I don't know if I was thinking about water itself, just kind of like spraying steam into their eyes, which is still bad. <laughs> That's still horribly painful. I would imagine. I would imagine <laughs> scalding steam. I feel like just like it's I feel like, like ah. steam makes more sense than like water jets, you know. Yeah, it does. Um. So so yeah, Still he's painful. he saves them, and maybe Mila Kunis is his daughter, and that's how yeah, they get didn't introduced. See her because she's invisible. Yeah, she was helping him. So yeah, okay, that gets two more people in, and then we only have to worry about fucking who was it. Or maybe, or maybe she's like his assistant, or whatever, or vice Someone. versa, or whatever is happening. Yeah, she's she... in relation to, so that we can get two people in faster because we've got to get this whole crew assembled. Yeah, uh, and his name's like Chauncey Stark. <laughs> <laughs> Great, <laughs> great name. Thanks. Um, and then she's she's just like. I don't know. What's like an old Western name? Um, um, fucking. Susan. Okay, that works. No, God Almighty, Trace. <laughs> what? That is, a, that is a joke I've tried to make every time <laughs> we're trying to make a name. I that thought that every was... time we have a woman that we need to give a name, I just say Susan, and I... then you go. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I thought that I thought that name was Sarah instead of Susan. I thought Sarah no, was the name Susan. we use all the time. Okay, maybe not Susan. <laughs> what if it's um uh Beth Beth Bethany what Sarah? Beth. What was what was uh Hallie Portman's character's name again? Uh Maggie. Maggie. Okay, I was just making sure. What did you say again? Beth Bethany. Something like that. Sure. Sounds good. Okay. Then we need to the int- Yeah, then we need to introduce Angelina Jolie somehow. Natalie Portman tells them her life story and why she's on a manhunt. And maybe they're like, He he did that to us too. Or whatever. We know him too. We're also He's- on a revenge mission. He maybe works- she's too vague about it. And they think she's talking about Jim Carrey's character because he's even the, worse, right? That's yeah, the he's like our, he's the ringleader of the whole thing. And yeah, so she describes it, and they're like, "Yeah, this one guy came up and he like burnt down our house and killed our dog." <laughs> and one guy, uh, <laughs> horrible things. And what if what if Seth Rogen secretly hates him because in in elementary school, uh, Jim Carrey tripped him in class and made him, yeah, uh, and made everyone laugh at him. Uh, that might be a little too heavy on the comedic relief. <laughs> but it's funny. <laughs> it is funny. Um, but yeah, they all have reasons to hate him. Um, yeah, and she's like, okay, well, let's go get him together. Like, we can't take him on. But one of them knows someone who can help. Angelina Jolie. Okay. Maybe it's uh, Seth Rogen, since... We already had a connection between uh, yeah. Steampunk Iron Man and Mila Kunis. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's like, wait, I remember somebody who... I know, someone who can help. So they have to go and convince I, her. I was flirting with her at the po- poker table, and she threw me through a wall. <laughs> she threw me so hard that I landed across the street. Um, And 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 he, then he says, like, and if I'm being honest... uh. That was hot. <laughs> I was kind of, I was kind of into it, <laughs> or however the fuck he laughs. 
Um, here, uh, okay, so then they then, go. Here's the thing. Here's what I was thinking. Yeah, they go and they talk to her. She doesn't want to do it. She doesn't do it with them. Okay. She comes okay. back during the fucking final fight. And, she's, and she saves the day kind of thing. Like, oh, yeah, it's the turning point. They're about to lose. All hope seems lost. And then she fucking flies in. Or, like, runs in, or yes. whatever power she has. Flies, she, flies in with her Wonder Woman powers. With her invisible jet. Um, yeah, flies her invisible jet into the into the barn that they're She rides in. her invisible four-strong carriage into the fight. Um. So how do we get Josh Brolin and Jim Carrey into this together? I thought we decided that Jim Carrey was... That Josh Brolin worked for Jim Carrey. Okay. So, they're just kind of together at this yeah, point. Yeah, that he, Jim Carrey was kind of the mastermind of the whole thing, where he's kind of the brains, Josh Brolin is the brawn. Yeah. He's kind of the secret. Maybe he's got villain. dirt on him. Oh, and that's why yeah. he sticks around this guy. Here's the thing. Josh Brolin doesn't want to be a bad guy. Except Jim in Carrey. the next movie when he's a bad guy. No, except in the next movie when he <laughs> redeems himself. And he's a good guy. And maybe okay. it's right at the end. I mean, that works. And I know we're fucking plotting it out, but he fucking redeems himself in the third movie because he finally finds his family or whatever the fuck Jim Carrey is doing to him. I think that should be it. Yeah. Jim Carrey is like holding his family hostage because he needs... Like a, a fucking, he needs his own version of like a Superman, and that's kind of what Josh Brolin. Well, is if this at. is a trilogy, yeah, you know how the trilogy works, right? Like the second one, it's supposed to be kind of a down, you know. That's what they say, at least. That's usually how it works. Not yeah. So I, should I our super team succeed, or should no. it be kind of a neutral? They shouldn't. They should have really just gotten the shit beat out of him. Maybe Seth Rogen seemingly dies. Oh, or maybe that would be good. One of them seemingly dies, but we we figure out a way to bring him back in the next one. Maybe Mila Kunis makes a heroic sacrifice yes. to save the rest of the team. And that's like the last scene. Then the, the only scene right after that is like them riding away and there's not really much dialogue and it's yeah. just it, it's just it's it's like that last scene in, in Empire where Luke and Leia are standing there at the window and it's like what the fuck is going to happen to the to the to our good to team our heroes of, to our good team of, of western superheroes Including steampunk Iron Man. And Seth Rogen. <laughs> and, um... And Maggie. Yes, and Maggie. She still, she, she still needs that revenge. But specifically steampunk Iron Man and Seth Rogen. They, <laughs> mi- they might get their own spinoff a la Hobbs and Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty much the movie. Uh, so, I think like, Steampunk Iron Man has a lot of legs to stand on. Well, what's Jim Carrey's superpower? See, I, I was thinking maybe... I know that we have a guy who doesn't really have a superpower, but I was thinking maybe he... He's just like one of those... What What about a healing factor? That's always horrifying. Yes. Hard to kill. So, so he doesn't, he's not like strong or anything like that. He just has a healing factor. So they think there's the one point in the battle where they think they kill him or hurt him or whatever. And, then and, he, his, and he can do his jaw weird. So, <laughs> so and he, he snaps like it back into place. Cracks back in place. And he starts and beating he, the shit out uh, of him. Yeah. Or he, he has pushes Josh Brolin. steampunk Iron Man over and he and sounds he, like an oil drum. And, well, he's, and he's like a turtle. He can't get up once he's on his back. <laughs> And um, and maybe he's about to kill him with like I don't know like a gun or a pitchfork or something. And then Angelina Jolie and she shows up. dives dives in the way. 
Oh, that's what you're talking about. I, I was thinking. I was thinking maybe I, it's. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. What if Angelina Jolie's character doesn't come back until the next one? Okay. So she makes her first appearance in this. We're she's setting like, it up. I don't want to do that. We're setting it up. And then maybe up. once the stakes get even higher. Yes. Then she steps up and she's like, okay, I should probably do something about this. I was thinking we make um, Bethany's death a little bit more ambiguous so that if whatever we come up with the way to resurrect her is easier instead of her getting stabbed in the stomach with a pitchfork or something, you know? <laughs> well, why do we need to bring her back to life? I mean, we don't have to. D- death, death should mean something in this world. That's a good point. That's a good point. Fucking kill her. Unless, unless, yeah. Let's just unless get her he makes a here. tincture that can bring her back to life. Maybe that's what they'll try to do in the first one, but then it just won't work. Or the next one, and it just won't work. It's pretty dark know. where they go and dig up her grave, and <laughs> she's like decrepit <laughs> and fucking. Anyway, I think I think we've got the movie. Below uh, above snakes so two what's below the name snakes of this one? below snakes. Above Snakes 2, Below Snakes. That's nice and confusing. It is. Why not just call it Below Snakes? Because then we don't know if it's a sequel. <laughs> okay. I, I think Below Snakes is better. I agree. Okay. Well, let's now we got to pitch these. Yeah, let's write these fucking pitches. Bob Ross. In this inspirational telling of the life of this generation's most famous painter, Tommy Lee Jones voices Bob Ross. You get to see through his mellow exterior into the life of the wholesome painter. Nick Cage voices William Alexander, Bob Ross's mentor, in this true-to-life story of the happy painter. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. I love that movie. Love that Bob Ross. That one... I already feel like I'll need some Kleenexes while yes, sitting it's gonna in be, the theater. My tears are being jerked already. Hit me with the <laughs> other pitch. Okay. Below Snakes. In this sequel to the critically acclaimed superhero western Above Snakes, Natalie Portman returns as Maggie, who seeks revenge for the murder of her mentor and friend. Realizing she's in over her head, she needs to assemble a team to take on the cunning outlaws portrayed by Josh Brolin and Jim Carrey. Can she get her vengeance? Only God knows. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Now comes which of these is getting made? As much as I love the above snakes franchise, the snakes trilogy. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to say that Bob Ross seems more likely to get made. I think so. A sequel to an already shaky movie is a rough sell. But just like a a good biopic is like... Especially if it's pretty, printed beautifully. Yeah. It's like, it's easier, you know? It's an easier mm-hmm. sell. I want to make a... Bob Ross has a has a heart a heartwarming life, heartbreaking at some points, and I think that'll sell well. And I just want people to know about him. Exactly. So, I feel like Bob Ross is definitely more likely to be made. I agree with that. That's the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, that that was it for the elevator pitch. Of course, you know we made our choice, but we're going to leave it up to you at home. Uh, you can go check out the posters we're making uh, and cast your vote on our social media. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at TEP underscore pod. Uh, like I said at the start of the show, tell your friends about us. Uh, and, you know, if you want to, leave a review. Rate it. Uh, good, bad, or otherwise, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, but that's all that we have to say. We will see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.